Hi, gorgeous, and welcome to the Confident, Energized, and Sexy Mama Show. I am Dorit Palvanov, your host, feminine energy expert, health coach for women, registered holistic nutritionist, and the creator of the groundbreaking health and mindset program for moms, Energized, designed for perimenopausal women who are done having kids and are ready to get their energy and power back. Ladies, think about it. What would the world look like if as women we stopped being so harsh on ourselves and instead felt more energized, powerful, confident, and more connected to our bodies? What if, as women, we honored the fact that we are built and wired differently than men, and being different does not mean being inferior? That the go-go-go mentality alongside doing, doing more to have more without ever pausing and resting only leads to chronic stress, anxiety, burnout, overwhelm, lack of joy, and it corrodes our health, relationships, and vitality. What if as women, wives, and mothers, we had the courage and confidence to desire more freedom, joy, power, energy, abundance, pleasure, fun, play, and sex all on our own terms? Mama, you deserve to feel good. You deserve to form healthy relationships and your body needs, craves, and deserves pleasure. This is your birthright. You are here because you believe in your feminine power. You are here because you care about health and the environment and you're not afraid to take action and change. You are here because you don't want to pass on a pattern of self-destruction, hiding, and not speaking your truth to your daughters. You're here because you're done feeling stuck living a mediocre life as a half woman. You're here because you're done struggling and frankly can no longer afford to feel like crap. Each week, I will be here for you, dropping a healthy dose of inspiration and motivation, as well as introducing you to my brilliant guests, where we will dive deep into all things womanhood, feminine power, energy, psychology, holistic and alternative health, fitness, food, nutrition, hormones, mindset, motherhood, relationships, sex, business, and much more. Mama, are you ready to take back control of your health? Let's do this. Today, I have another super juicy, spicy, fun episode. (laughs) So not only episode, but actually I'm going to introduce you to uh, somebody who, um, a new friend I found online. Well, she found me, but then I was stalking her on Instagram and totally like subscribed to anything, everything and anything she has. So, um, I'm going to let you to introduce yourself. I think uh, your latest post on Instagram said that you pronounce your name as Makina or McKenna. Like you take yeah. it from there. So, okay, I'll take it from there. So my full name is McKenna, but that's really hard for people to get the spelling of and get the pronunciation right and to not call me Michaela McKenzie, whatever. So ever since- McDonald's. Joe McDonald's. (laughs) Girl, the kids in elementary school used to tease me about that, so we're not going to go there. That's that's another episode, okay? (laughs) So I have always gone by Kenna my entire life, so when it came to- to taking my business online, I was like, I have to call it Kennefit. So hi, you guys. Um, I am Kenna with Kennefit, and I help women rebel against the stop and start diet lifestyle so they can get easy results. They're going to last them forever. I love that so, so much. We are so aligned. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I've never called my work uh, rebellious, but I guess it is. So it totally is, especially when you start so the idea of can I tell you how the idea yeah please please yes okay so I've kind of always been a rebel like my entire life like ask my mother she will tell you that my first word was no Um, (laughs) but the idea of rebelling for me really came to fruition after I had my daughter and I was struggling with postpartum weight loss like Mm. so hard and I have a bachelor's of science or yeah, bachelor's of science and exercise science. I'm a certified personal trainer and a nutrition coach, but even I struggled with all of it, trying to follow the things that I had done in the past. Those typical calorie counting, point counting, Tupperware, shake, 
things that we have all tried. At least I know a lot of women have tried before in the name of weight loss. And then the idea came to me of what if I just rebelled against all of this and I went back to me and my body and I started yes, yes. listening to my cues about hunger, energy, and cravings. And I started really working from the inside out and it clicked. I lost 30 pounds and I've kept it off for nearly two and a half years. Easily too. That's the thing. Easily. Yes. Yes. That's a huge component because so many, uh, so many moms who I work with, it, it, there is this just general sense of when you are finally choosing to um, work on your, you know, your health, whether it's food or exercise, it's for sure going to be like hard and it's going to take a long time and it's going to like suck. <laughs> and I work with moms who are <laughs> suck dry. So, it's, so there is like this kind of like a belief that it has to be hard. Yes. Yes. And I think that we've gotten that belief because those programs that we have tried are not made for our bodies. Like that's my whole point. Yes. Because when you start going in line with your bodies, you start rebelling, things do become easily easy. Some, like now you don't have to worry about motivation. Excuses aren't really a thing, you know, and you just, you don't, I find the work that I do with myself and my clients, we don't need willpower because we feel so good. Of course we want to keep feeling good. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. We're going to dive deeper into willpower, but before we do that, um, do you want to talk a little bit about your, some, some of your like personal life? Are you a mom? Are you a wife? Just so that we kind of know where you're coming from and yeah, absolutely. So you guys already know that, uh, the kids used to tease me about being called McDonald's. So there's that, <laughs> but I have a daughter, so I'm a mom of a three-year-old little pistol of a girl. She is a little fire and I love her for it. Her name is Lilith and I've been married. Sunday will be nine years. Wow. Yeah. If I'm doing, or no, I've been with my husband. Oh, I got that wrong. See, I'm bad with dates. I've been with my husband for 10 years. Sunday will be seven years that we, since we've been married. So um, he was active duty military and now is out of the army. And so we are living back at home in the state of Michigan. Awesome. I love it so much. And uh, for sure, ladies, all the links that um, McKenna is going, going to uh, mention today, whether it's her programs or um, any giveaways that you're going to give, all of that is going to be linked to the show notes. So please just for now, just listen in. And if there's anything you want to find and, you know, uh, access after you can always head on over to show notes. All right. So here's where I want to begin with you. Yes. I mean, as you know, uh, my work is also around, um, women and women's bodies and, and teaching women how to live in alignment with their, um, biological built, uh, and design as specifically as females. So mm -hmm. I cover a lot, like I talk a lot about food, nutrition, but also hormones, Yes. Uh, because I have noticed that when we feed ourselves, it's not necess It's not that we feed our bodies as much as we feed our hormones. So totally. that is kind of like, that's where I'm coming from. But I am curious to know, um, why do you believe that women's bodies stop mm -hmm. responding to diets and, you know, like different health uh, efforts that people take? Uh, I'm just curious to, to hear your, um, your look on that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I totally agree with you. It's all about hormones. And for me, it's all about your metabolism, which for those that don't know, your hormones play a huge part of that, right? Because hormones are messengers. That's yeah. what they do. And your metabolism is a vehicle for that message. Um, and the thing is, you can never out diet, out exercise or out anything yes. else your hormones and your metabolism. Like they are queen. Your body is a queen because no matter what you've put her through, babies, all of it, she is still there for you. Even if she's a little banged up in the process, she's still with you, right? And so you cannot out exercise or out diet your body. Oops, did I lose you? 
Oh no. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So, so is that the reason why the body stops responding to diets? It's because it's not aligned with the, um, with the, with the hormones. Yes, I would say yeah. so. Absolutely. Yeah. And so can you, so can you talk a little bit about this connection between hormones and metabolism? Let's, let's dive a little bit deeper in there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what my work base is off of is how is your body responding to the foods? And there are three things that I look for. That is hunger, energy, and cravings. Yeah. Now, if you are eating the right bot or the right foods for your body, so again, your hormones and metabolism, all of those things will be aligned. Now, of course, you're going to get hungry because that is human, right? But it won't be like, unstoppable hunger you're eating everything in the pantry kind of hunger it'll yes. be just that cue of oh it's time to eat here's my meal and i'm good to go now after that meal especially that's when i start to look for the indicators of cravings and energy if you're having cravings out the roof and i know you're trying because i've done this too i know you're trying to chew gum or chew on some carrots or something like that to avoid those things that is your hormones trying to tell you that there is something going on and things are not aligned. And then of course, energy. Like I feel like it's so common nowadays, especially in America, today's world with how busy we are. Yes. That every, especially moms, that we like make the memes about like, you know, having to drink coffee all day long. And like, no shame. I'm a coffee drinker too, but like just this idea that you can never keep up with your kids, and that's not how it's supposed to be at all. So if you have everything in line, you're gonna have energy to keep up with your kids and more. Cravings aren't gonna be that big of a deal, or if they do pop up, which they will, you know how to handle them, and then your hunger is gonna be kept in line as well. Yeah, I really love this. That's exactly what I teach also. Yes. Um, it's, it's really all about learning how to create, cultivate, and also sustain those levels of energy. Because at the end of the day, it all comes down to energy. We mm. need energy to, you know, have time, have fun with our kids, to even show up for them, to right. show up for our marriages, to show up for our, our careers, our friends, our just life in general. And also one thing, one huge thing that I am dealing with specifically is libido. So especially at the end of the day, if you have no, you know, energy whatsoever after the entire day of just running around and being rush, rush, rushed, um, then libido and desire for sex, like you can basically forget about it. So I love it so much. So, um, let's talk on, I'm just, uh, on your website right now and I love everything about it. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted, I want to talk about, um, about diets. So, yes. so many women, I'm sure you and I, um, have encountered and, you know, in terms of clients and, but also, you know, just women out there, mm -hmm. um, whenever it's time for, uh, whenever we crave to, you know, take better care of ourselves, diet is like the first thing we, we go, we go to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I am curious to know if you can talk about why do you believe that we have to ditch diets? I mean, mm -hmm. we talked about it a little bit earlier mm -hmm. and how doing that will make you actually a better mom, a better wife, just a better person. What mm -hmm. about dieting is so unhealthy? Yeah. So I'm really glad you asked this because I think there's a big clarification and it has to do with mindset for me on this, because when we think of diet, at least the majority of women that I have worked with, it goes straight to deprivation. Yes. It goes straight to the good foods and the bad foods and saying to your kids, mommy can't have that because she's on a diet. It goes to restricting calories like crazy, cutting out carbs completely, you know, again, going to the things of like counting points and this and that. And I feel like just that connotation, like diets didn't start off as evil, but they have become evil for us throughout the years because of that mindset link with deprivation. Um, so that's why I argue to ditch diets. That is not a free pass to go ahead and just eat all the foods you want, girl. Like that's, that's not what I mean by that, but it's definitely ditch the diets in the sense of ditch that mindset around deprivation, ditch that mindset around it has to be terrible in order for it to work because it doesn't. 
Yeah. Um, another thing that I am noticing is that <clears throat> when we are on a diet, mm -hmm. like if you think about it in terms of your mindset, immediately you're thinking about like a time frame. Mm -hmm. So let's say I go on a diet, whether it is whatever, Jenny Craig or uh, Weight Watchers, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, this diet has a starting date and like a start date and an, and an end date. While you are on that diet, <laughs> you are, you might be doing really well. And I've seen it so many times women, like in my yoga studio, for example, I go and women like this, you know, there's like a season in their life. Many times it's because they really want to fit into that black dress for like a wedding or somewhere. And so they really take care of themselves. They start eating better. But the moment they get off the diet, they gain the weight right back plus some more. And so mm -hmm. there is this yo-yo pattern mm -hmm. that I am seeing and it's nonstop, nonstop. And what really angers me is that women like are not even aware of it. Like they, they believe that it's normal and mm -hmm. they think that it's because well, I, I'm not on a diet anymore. Well, so of course mm -hmm. it's going to happen. So can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about sustainability? How can women eat mm -hmm. or what should we do in order? Cause you talked about how you've been able to keep the weight, like the 30 pounds off for two mm -hmm. years and, you know, hopefully for the future too. So talk yeah. about the, the sustainability piece. How do we make our, you know, uh, health efforts, whether it's with food or with exercise, how, from your perspective, how do you do it sustainable? Totally. Uh, so first is the idea of what's the old saying. It's like you fish for a man or you give a man a fish. He eats for a day, teach a man how to fish or a woman. In this case, you teach a woman how to fish and she stays full like her entire life. Right. First is that component. So those I, the, those diets, like you mentioned, like for example, Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers, they're not really teaching you anything. They're teaching you how to stay on their program forever so that they will make money off of you every single month, flat out. And that's the diet industry. 95% of diets fail and women usually gain the weight back plus a little bit more in about three years. So you're absolutely right on that. Now, um, the other portion of that for me is because we as moms tend to be busy because it is our tendency to put others first and ourselves so, so last on the priority list. How can we make it fit our lifestyle? So kind of it, it goes from like zero to 60 like that, right? You go from not in at all couch potato to suddenly you're all in, you're throwing out all the foods in your pantry, you know, you're counting all the points and the calories, whatever that may be. And it really misses the point of how can you teach yourself that habit, which no one really likes to talk about habit because it's not a sexy word, um, but it comes down to how can you fit those small habits into your lifestyle easily so that by the time you get up to that 60 miles per hour up to that level, it's like second nature for you because you've already been working to get it there for so long. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. And so, so now I think it's a great segue to talking about willpower because that's another, another piece in this puzzle where, you know, okay, so it's not a diet. So I'm not on the diet, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm taking care of myself and I am learning on, you know, how to make all of this sustainable. And so I learn, I'm learning about hormones and nutrition and um, just about my body in general, about, you know, that kind of stuff, about my biology, my, my you know, understanding the female des body's design. Mm -hmm. Let's assume that uh, that's happening. But then, and I see it all the time, Kina, I see um, women, it's like, it's like a zigzag. It's like you're doing really, really well for a little bit and then there's a dip and then you're doing really, really well and then there's a dip. So let's talk about willpower because, uh, and, and I, in, you know, when we connected, uh, through v through email, you, you typed, uh, in the email that in your opinion, uh, willpower is a big fat lie. And you also wanted to share your own story of how this 
-hmm. your own false belief and will willpower led to the biggest crash and burn of your life. So maybe you can lead with your story and then, and then share why you, you believe that willpower is a lie. Totally. So, um, so my background is as a personal trainer. So at the time, this was around 2013, 2014. Um, and this is my story about the absolute biggest crash of my life. Um, we were living in Colorado Springs at the time because that's where my husband was stationed. Um, and things started to unfold. So he got orders to deploy and he deployed to Kuwait for nine months. Um, crap around the house started breaking down, like life stress, which always any military wives out there or anyone yeah. who has to travel, that always happens when they're gone. And then in addition to that, I really, really did not like the environment that I was working in. I was at a huge commercial gym at the time and the work environment was incredibly toxic. And the combination of kind of all of those things combined really started to make me hate exercise and hate eating right. And so even though every morning I got dressed and it was, it was kind of one of those jobs, if you've ever had one that you wake up in the morning and you think about going to work and you start crying yeah. and then you get dressed and you drive to work and you're crying and you stay in your car until the very last second. And then you slap like the fake face on, you make it through the day. It's so draining and then you drive home and you're crying thinking about going back the next day. That was the job that I had, but it was as a fitness professional. And so every morning, even though it had been months since I exercised, even though the freaking local taco stand, it was like this greasy taco stand, they knew my car and they knew my order when I drove up because I was eating there almost every single night, which was way out of my norm. I was going to the gym and I was preaching to people about how to exercise and how to eat healthy. Mm. And again, a combination of those things just led to a big crash because what I kept on doing, I kept on looking on social media. I kept on searching Pinterest for inspiring quotes and thinking that like, okay, this, I'm no excuses now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go full out. And it wouldn't work. I would exercise for a day and then I'd be right back where I started. And then the mental game would kick in of you're a loser. You're a failure. You don't deserve this. You've gotten so fat. Like all those negative things started to creep in on me even more. And I crashed and burned. Looking back on it, I completely think that I was depressed, but at the time I didn't want to realize it because I was told about it. And at the time I thought that willpower would be what would fix me. So I was looking at fitness people on Instagram and like making the inspo boards of fat uh, flat abs and six packs and again getting those inspirational quotes and trying to put those up. And it just made me fall even worse. And throughout the years, of course, kind of getting back in touch with my body and um, really feeding my body, I have learned that willpower is a big fat lie. There is a difference between discipline and willpower. And discipline is one of those words that's not really sexy either, but if you wanna feel good, you have gotta have a little bit of discipline um, to get there, but then also, and I'm kind of going on a tangent here, so stop me if you need, but mm -hmm. there's also, and I'm sure you've noticed this with your clients, sometimes women don't know how good they can feel yes. until they're feeling good. And so there is that little, those steps of getting back up there to where you do start to feel so good, like where I'm at right now, I don't want to go back. And that's not willpower. That's just knowing how good I feel and knowing how bad I felt at the time. Absolutely. Oh, this resonates so well with me. And what's interesting is when I, I, when I begin to work with women, the hardest, really the hardest part in this process is the saying yes. At yes. least what I see. The moment a woman says yes, I agree, you know, here, take me, teach me, yes. <laughs> mold me. From that moment on, all of a sudden, it all just clicks, 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 clicks. 
but that moment of saying yes, it's mm -hmm. not saying yes to me. It's not saying yes to my program or your program. It's saying yes to themselves. Amen. And it's, right. And it's really just, um, it's just sometimes I, I even say, I even kind of like, um, advise women to just to just say yes like to just yeah. because i i can see how bad they feel mm -hmm. um and and then the other thing i wanted to ask you before we came with before we started recording is one issue that i'm seeing over and over again in my practice with women is that when we feel like shit mm -hmm. um eventually it becomes a norm and we get so used to feeling like that, that we don't even, I don't know if it's, we don't believe that something better is possible. I don't even think we consider it. Mm -mm. And, and then women would tell me, well, you know, life is hard. And, mm -hmm. and, and my mom had a hard life. My grandmother had a hard, li hard, mm -hmm. hard life and everybody around me has a hard life. So mm -hmm. I guess I just need to learn how to deal with it. Mm. right talk about that what do you think so this kind of goes with what you were just saying too there is so much power in women saying yes to themselves even if they failed in the past even if they don't recognize themselves in the mirror even if they do feel like shit the fact that they want to take that leap, which I think subconsciously it's a bit of a leap because they're not sure if it's going to work out. And they feel such like shit about themselves. They don't want to spend family money on themselves when yeah. they get their kids X, Y, Z, because they're not sure if they're worth it. And that breaks my heart because I have been there as well. And so there is power in just giving yourself a chance and there's also power in letting yourself learn and giving yourself a little grace, right? Because even though you think, I mean, look at me, I should have known, I've got all the degrees, I've got all of the certifications and 10 years of experience and I should anyways, right? And so many women feel like they should know what to do or that they do know what to do or my favorite, well, I used to do X, Y, Z, and they compare themselves to that. And it's like, no, let's stop the comparison. Let's ground ourselves in where you are right now and then figure out the action steps that you can take to empower yourself to feel better and get to where you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. That's why that's, I believe that that's why it's so powerful to work with a coach. It's totally. so powerful because... I remember myself being in that state and I just, it's like a child who wants to learn to ride a bike, mm -hmm. but they have no idea. Uh, they have absolutely no concept in their brain of what balance is and how it feels. And mm -hmm. so you need that parent or whoever it is that is teaching you to kind of like hold, hold the bike for you and kind of like help you to, you know, to keep going and not to give up and you're going to fall down and yes. you're going to bring you back up. And it's that really like working with a coach and mentors and just really being vulnerable to that and, and just trust the process. It has been as literally shifted my life. Mm -hmm. I personally, I used, I, I should say when oh, I you had, too. <laughs> when I had my first daughter, Mm -hmm. I gained so much weight and I worked with a personal trainer mm -hmm. and I think we paid like $3,500 for, for that. And I did lose the weight I did, but the moment I got off mm -hmm. and then I got pregnant again mm -hmm. and then I gained this whole, you know, weight again. Um, there was kind of like this place in me and my husband also is like well you know we've done the personal training already so you should like you should know how to do this on your own and I didn't mm -hmm. I did not know I felt like I, I was that fit that um horse who was <laughs> who was you know the water was brought to him to it yeah instead yeah. of learning how to drink the water on my own yeah. at yeah. the time I didn't even have the I didn't even understand it 
because mm-hmm. it wasn't even an option, you know, the empowerment and the here, take your power back. You can do this on your own. Here is how. Mm-hmm. Um, so from that, what, where I want us to go next is uh, the fitness industry. So one of the questions that you, um, that you wanted me to ask you, and I love it so much, is what is the fitness industry doesn't want us to know? Um, that is, I think, you know, so many women would be curious to know. I'm curious to know, uh, cause I do go to the gym still. Um, but please illuminate us. What, what are those, um, things? Mm-hmm. So it goes to basically what you just talked about. And that is the idea that we have to, how can I put this clearly? The idea that we have to, that the answer is outside of ourselves. Yes right? And that we have to do these programs in order to be successful. And that's not to say not working with a coach. Like there, I agree with you. There is so much power. I have a coach, like I'm a coach and I work with a coach that keeps yeah, me. Same coach. for me. Same. Yeah. For me. And there is so much power in that. Um, because outside of that, and I wanted to clarify this too, you've talked about kind of, um, the idea of, or at least for me, reaching out to a coach felt shameful because I should know better. And Mm -hmm. I want to let everyone know out there is that if you have a coach or are um, in a program that's making you feel shame, you need to switch. You need to find something else, right? Um, But getting back to the fitness industry, the fitness industry doesn't want you to know about your hormones. It doesn't want you to know about your metabolism. What it wants you to do is blindly follow the crowd everywhere with all of the latest fads, because what does that mean? that makes them more money. And even if it isn't built for your body, so you are feeling those cravings, you're having crazy hunger, your energy is crashed, well, that means you need to buy XYZ supplement, right? Or you need to do this instead. And so they don't want you to know about yourself and how to decode those messages from your hormones or metabolism or how to rebel in that way and find a different path because the one that you're in right now is that cycle. It's that start and stop cycle that we've talked about and it's a cycle that keeps you as a client spending money on the fitness industry. Like it's, what is it, like a $6 billion industry right now? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that's where it's like, okay, let's get out of that cycle. And to do that, I think it, I, I'll let you go. You look like you have a question. (laughs) Yeah. I, so here's, here's where I'm a little bit, um, kind of on the fence with that. So, um, so I myself have memberships in two gyms. (laughs) Okay. Not gyms, two places. So I have a membership at a yoga studio, and I also have a membership at a like Orange Theory, so boot boot camp type of of, um, exercise. And I find myself, I've tried it so many times to like turn on, you know, YouTube and do it on my own. And again, going back to willpower and and discipline, and 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 it just doesn't work for me. It doesn't what I, especially because my life is so full and I have so many, you know, I have my kids to juggle and my work and the household and and all of those things. I see a huge value in consistency and continuity. Meaning like I I like to have somebody waiting for me Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, I go there and I do my exercise, I do my workout and then I come back and and that gives me a sense of sustainability, I guess. I keep coming back to that word. Right. So, right. so I want you to address that because that is something that I do think um, is valuable. Um, right. and, and it's not when we're saying that the, the, in the, the fitness industry is, you know, only wants your money. It wants, you to, it wants to keep you maybe basically hostage. Mm-hmm. You know, once you're kind of like hooked and you're paying, you know, a membership fee, mm-hmm. basically you're stuck. So um, talk a little bit more about that. 
Um, mm-hmm. And how can we still, you know, rip the benefits of taking care of ourselves mm-hmm. while still feeling empowered in, you mm-hmm. know, in this process? Yeah, totally. So maybe I should have clarified that I'm talking about like kind of the dark side of the fitness and the weight loss industry, because there are great coaches out there. There are great programs out there, but the majority that I have seen or that I have been a part of myself are basically there just to make money and keep you stuck stuck in that cycle. Um, that being said, when you were talking about having those gym memberships and going and enjoying having it on your schedule, for me, I think that boils down to accountability. And I think accountability is freaking awesome, especially as moms, when we can have something scheduled in our schedule, just like the rest of our crazy lives. I think that our the way that we can stick to it, I think that we'll be able to stick to it better and do it longer. So I think that when it comes to the fitness industry, accountability is amazing. If it keeps you there and you're feeling good and things are working. Um, but there is that dark side. For example, I just had a woman message me yesterday that she was like, I think I need your help. I just joined a gym and I felt like a dollar sign to them as soon as I walked in. And all they wanted to do was just pitch her product after product after product after product. She didn't feel like she was even comfortable there, didn't get orientation or anything like that. And that's the side of the fitness industry that I'm talking about. Yeah. And also maybe when you are, um, and I, am speaking to the audience here, um, when you're on this journey and you really, in my opinion, you're like looking to start taking better care of yourself, make sure that whoever you're hiring is not only teaching you how to use the equipment or to, you know, to lift dumbbells or whatever, but Mm -hmm. also giving you education like that will take will carry you through your lifetime who mm-hmm. somebody who talks to you about your female design about your hormones about mm-hmm. about your biology about hydration about nutrition about about microbiome about like all those things because mm-hmm. these are the things that you know if you decide to change you know to try different things this these things they stay and exactly. it, it, it empowers you and it gives you that, 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 it gives you the power. You are the one owning the power. It's not, you know, it's not the trainer. It's not the coach. It's nobody. It's you. And only you know what your body needs. So I, I've, I've given my example, right? So I've been doing yoga for five years. And at some point, I just started feel like I started just craving something that is more of like a higher intensity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was able to, by listening to my body, because I've, I've, you know, I learned and I actually live what I actually practice what I preach. I, you know, I live in alignment with my feminine energy current and all of that. And I feed myself, you know, in alignment with that. And that's how I felt. I was able to really tune into my body and then give it what it was craving for. And maybe, I don't know, maybe a year from now, I'm going to get tired of it and I'll need something right. else. But right. it's really about like always remembering the power is yours. Keep coming yes. back to yourself. Keep, yes. keep coming back to yourself. It's not because, you know, John, the trainer said so. It's because, wait, what is it that I need? What is it that I actually uh, thrive off of? Yeah. And, and to add to that, I think it's, getting back in touch with listening to your gut, Mm. right? And your intuition. Literally. (laughs) Yeah, if you want to call it that. And maybe this will be a separate conversation, but I think there's power as as moms specifically for us to learn how to listen to our gut and our bodies so that we can teach our sons and daughters how to do the same and make sure they don't get lost in the cycle of calorie counting and all that negativity. Yeah. Oh, that's a huge, that's a huge piece of education that I, when I work with clients is where, where, when, and why, and where did you lose your center? That ability to, to, you know, to make your own decisions. Why is it that you keep doubting yourself? Like what happened in your life that got you to that place of like Mm -hmm. feeling like you, you are like, like you need somebody, like you talked about, you know, this external 
um, input in order yeah. to feel really good. Okay, awesome. And, and also I was thinking about how this is so similar to the medical system, right? Like when, when we feel, when we feel really, really bad or like we, you know, we're not healthy, we go to the doctor and we ask for the pill, like we ask for the quick fix and many times they will give it to you. Now it's not to, you know, to bash uh, doctors or the medical system. It's just that it's based upon the premise and the assumption that people are not willing to do the work. They just want the quick fix. Mm -hmm. This entire industry is built on that. And it's very similarly to a gym, right? A person comes there and let's say they want to get in shape. Okay, so they will have all the pills, <laughs> quote unquote pills, yeah. Yeah. all the solutions to give you that result that you're looking for. Um, but then it's on, it's, it's at the expense of your power and your center. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my, that's my few cents. Okay. Um, yeah. You want to say something? I, I did. And you talked about like, when did you lose that ability to connect with yourself? And I just wanted to, to pinpoint for me, it was around when I was like 11 or 12 and I joined Weight Watchers because I was a chubby kid. And so we all joined Weight Watchers and suddenly it was someone else telling me what to follow, how to eat and all this stuff. And I think that that for me personally set the tone for my issues with weight growing up and being an adult and kind of going through those cycles of like starvation and binging and all that ugh, stuff. So yes. Yeah. You know what? Actually, McKenna, what? McKenna, Kina. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh oh my gosh mcdonald's no no that's my, that's gonna be my uh <laughs> nickname for you that's okay <laughs> anyways no no i'm just joking um you, you know what i didn't share this with you but actually that was one of the reasons why i said yes to having you on the show because oh. i've been pitched by many fit pros and and uh, exercise gurus whatever to come yeah. on the show and they were all like really oh my gosh so hot many of them were are single uh you know are not married don't have kids and then they have this beautiful six pack they oh, yeah. slather themselves with like oils and they look so oh yeah. my gosh right Delicious. i look I, right and i look at that and i'm like oh, that's so nice but it's not me and I will never be that. <laughs> right. right. And also, you know what, quite frankly, I believe that, and I think it's not just me. I think it's all of us. If we really were dedicated to that, we can get there. Oh, but at what, right. But at what cost? That means I have to be five days, a, five days a week at the gym. Uh, it means time away from my kids. It means I have to, you know, I do have to starve myself. It's not what I want. It's not, it's just not. And so for me, I had to kind of like come to terms with my body type and how I am. So I want you to talk about that too, because on your, on, on your feed and on, in your uh, Instagram, I love how, I mean, you're so delicious and luscious and sexy and gorgeous. But you're not, you know, you're not like them. So I want you to talk about that. Yeah. So I have spent my entire life trying to be like them. Um, when we talk about like body image and weight specifically, I remember once in like fourth grade, like an exercise science class from the local college came to assessments on a bunch of fourth graders to like us. And my first memory of, um, being concerned about my body and feeling insecure about my weight was when I stepped on the scale and it said 96 pounds. And I looked at my friends and I said, Oh my God, I'm 96 pounds. I'm so fat because all of them were like 70 pounds or, you know, my body was just different. I say that I'm big because I am, I have big feet, big boobs, big muscles. And I'm okay with that now because for so many years I, tried so hard not to be that. And I tried to be the trainer with the six pack abs. And let me tell you, I got close once. I have the picture on like my flip phone because it was that long ago to prove it. Um, but it was because I was single, I was living by myself, 
I was young. I didn't have a ton of bills to pay. I worked at a gym 12 hours a day and all of my friends were in the gym. And so outside of the gym, I would still be at the gym working out for like two to three hours. Now, is that where I wanted my life to stay? No, I pictured my life how it is now with a family and a business and different things where you have different values and priorities. And at some point, I had to come to the realization, and I believe it was around the time that I moved in with my husband, and all of a sudden, all of these chips and desserts and cured meats that I had never allowed myself to eat because at the time I thought if it's out of sight, if it's out of mind, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to keep it in my apartment. So I'm not going to eat it then. Then suddenly all this food was there and I was like shoveling it in my face <laughs> because I had deprived myself for so long. But that's when I realized, okay, what are my values and how, where, where am I physically? I was trying to so hard to be that size zero when the smallest I've been was like a six or an eight. I'm just curvy. It's just how I am. And you know what? Now I embrace it. I do CrossFit. I do weightlift, weightlifting, which is something that I had avoided for so many years because I wanted to be toned and slim and ballerina's body, right? And I'm five foot two, by the way, so I'm a shorty. And it's so funny because now that I am doing, I'm feeding my body and I'm doing the activities that feel really good. And for me, that is to pick up a ton of weight and set it back down again. I love it. And my body loves it. And there's so much empowerment in that as opposed to trying to force yourself to be something you're not. Yeah. To be skinny. I remember myself and I still have that when I look in the mirror and like you can see my arms, mm -hmm. I would imagine myself. And I remember even when I, before we even had kids, that's, that's where like it, the reality check, that was like a reality hit for me. Cause <laughs> when I was like at, at my like heaviest, when I was my, he the heaviest, I would look in the, in the mirror and my husband was there and I was like so depressed and so sad. And I'm like, I want to slice my arms in half, yeah. <laughs> slice my thighs in half. And I want to and he would say like, but Dori, like I remember even before we got kids, even before we got married and you were like, you know, the skinniest, you used to say the same thing. Yeah. Right? And so I'm like, oh my gosh, it's true. It's true. So maybe that's just the way my body is. Yes. And, yeah. and, and, and it's just like, I have to learn how to, how to accept and embrace it. It's not to say that I am going to neglect myself. No, of course not. But no. it's really, it's the embracing of, you know, a body type. So I'm glad we talked about that because that's a big, big thing for women. Okay. The last question I'm going to ask you is, and before we go to that, to the next part is I wanted you to talk about the synergy between food and exercise. Cause that's something that keeps coming up a lot. And, uh, in the fitness fitness industry, um, even when I go to my bootcamp classes, um, the teacher would say, you know, remember exercise is only 20%, uh, you know, of, of the work, 80% is food. So talk about that. <clears throat> yeah. So good on your teacher, because I agree, except I would almost say that more has to do with food. So um, with the women that I work on or work with, what I notice is that we start off with all or nothing. And that is with exercise and with food. And we've already talked about the diet portion of dieting, going into deprivation and all that kind of stuff. Um, I personally start food. And that is because as you know, most women are, their hormones are all over the place. They are overtired. They are overstressed. And then you try and add on exercise on top of that, yeah. which PS, you guys, exercise is considered a stress on your body. Yes. It's mostly considered a positive stress, but it's still a stress on your body. So if you are a mom who is overweight, burned out, you wake up tired, but at nighttime you cannot relax or fall asleep or have a good night of sleep. And then you try and add intense exercise on top of that because you think that that is the key to your weight loss. 
it's not going to happen. You're probably either going to gain more weight or stay exactly where you are, except you'll be more tired. So I start off with food first because I think that that is where the key lies. Once you start feeling better with your fuel and you start getting more energy with food, because food is fuel, then you'll have more energy to then start the next phase with exercise. Um, and what was I going to say? Shoot, I had a thought and I lost it. So <laughs> you'll come back to it. You'll come back to it. But yeah, um, I see it all the time. Even in my own experience, um, sometimes there were there were, there are weeks that what that I attend the boot camp like four times a week, and I still feel bloated. I still feel like oh, and yeah. and it's it's this illusion of me saying, well, I burnt you know five hundred calories today, so I can have it. Like I can you know. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's an illusion because what that does, it actually bogs me down. And remember, going back to that conversation of energy, um, this is not having energy top of mind. This is kind of like, um, who said that? I think Dave Asprey said it, that we are, uh, do you know Dave Asprey? No, no. Oh my gosh, you have to, you have to look him up. So he, and for all of you who are listening, look him up. Uh, he has a podcast too. I think it's called Bulletproof Sessions or something like that. So he's the creator of Bulletproof Coffee. Oh, okay. Um, I'm familiar with the brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this guy is just brilliant. The only problem I have with him <laughs> is that when he, when he shares information, he, I don't know why, uh, he doesn't divide it into, you know, female and male. And yeah. I know there's such a difference between, Huge. you know, right? Between the, how female body metabolizes food and hormones and the, even the brain, like they're so different. Um, so anyway, so he, he, is the, he, he was the one who said, I think I listened to the Ultimate Health podcast um, and he mentioned that when we um, we're, when we're on this health journey, it's a huge mistake to to believe that okay, I can go to the gym and kill myself, but then have pizza. So mm -hmm. this is not being healthy. This is not uh, you know going back to the willpower and being disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a, all about choosing to feel good and mm -hmm. always bringing back your own. Um, you know, how do I feel? How do I feel? How do I feel after eating this pizza? So yeah, you know, my, I, I felt good in my mouth, like it tasted good, but how right. do I actually feel after it, especially for us ladies? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and for those of you who are tracking yourself on the female daily tracking sheet, it is super clear to, I think 99% of women that those kind of foods, like high carby foods, high mm -hmm. fat, high carbs, um, it's, it's, drains you down so mm -hmm. i was talking because i was hoping you got your thought back i did and it okay. did come back so it works so thank you so, okay cool <laughs> um, anytime so another, yeah um another reason why i think that starting with food is is so so important is because there is like that dip or that fallout phase especially when we start with exercise first where you feel like crap like you just do, like I've heard from so many women, like, oh, I started exercising because I thought it would make me feel better, but I feel worse afterwards. Yes. And once you start eating for your body, that changes. So like where I'm at right now, I still have my reward days. I still have days where I do have that pizza. And like last night we had birthday cake. Like I still have those things occasionally, but I would tell you right now, I can feel it in my workout the next day. Yes. And so if you're struggling with trying to desperately stick to that exercise plan, desperately stick to that diet, using all the willpower and all the motivation, there's a reason why your body doesn't like the exercise and it probably has to do with you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, guys, ladies, no guys ladies keep keep energy top of mind it's all about the energy if you want to feel good that means that you're what you're really craving is to feel energized and if you want to feel energized then maybe it's a good idea to to choose that zucchini pasta over pizza <laughs> or or 
a cauliflower crusted pizza. Yeah. It's not okay. about saying no to pizza. It's right. about like being really creative with like, how can I make this healthier or, you know, in a way or that having that like conscious decision. Like for me, again, with pizza, I made the conscious decision of, oh, I know I'm not going to feel the greatest after this, but I'm going to go ahead and have this just for this night, just for this day. And I have the tools to figure out how to get myself back to feeling better afterwards. Right. And also that's where the conscious piece is super important. It's like really looking at the next day and if you know that you have like an important meeting and you have to do a presentation, yeah. like whatever, a birthday party that you have to organize, like if you know that the next day is going to be super strenuous and re that requires a lot of energy, don't do it. Be, you're smarter than that. Don't do it. Like really, this is where consciousness and, you know, eating, you know, with, de de what's the word? Deliberation? Is that a word? Deliberately? Yeah, deliberately. Yes, yes, yes. Eating deliberately. Thank you. <laughs> That's where it's, it's super important. All right. I love this conversation so, so much. I mean, we can have, we can talk all day long. I think you and I are so, yeah, we're so um, aligned with our values. Um, before I let you go, I have uh, a few questions that I ask all my guests. They're a bit personal and I love asking them because I, I, at the end of the day, you know, we're all women and we are all human beings. Uh, we're all spirits having a human experience. And I love giving that um, kind of like a window uh, to the listeners, but also for myself, because I want them to see that you are, you know, even though you're an expert, you are, you know, human and you're, oh, I'm real. I'm yeah. real. <laughs> you're real. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So my first one is, this show is all about inspiring mothers and women and mothers um, to thrive as women and wives and mothers. And I like to call it being a goddess in your life. So I'm curious to know, how are you showing up as a goddess in your own life? How do you take care of yourself, your soul, your body? What are some of your non-negotiables? Yes, my non-negotiable that I start off first thing in the morning is time by myself to journal pray and meditate. It is absolutely, I started that when my daughter was teeny tiny and people thought I was crazy because they were like, sleep when the baby sleeps. And I'm like, well, I need a life too. So <laughs> I get, I get up in the morning before everyone else in my house. Um, I make a cup of organic coffee and that is like my me time. I journal whatever is on my mind. I do a little gratitude list and I have a little meditation or prayer time. So that is number one. Um, number two, I make my food a priority and I just have to. So uh, I will make my food before I make my daughter's food, which isn't always easy. But <gasps> You selfish mom. I'm, no, I'm a terrible <laughs> mother feeding myself. Oh my gosh. And that, that doesn't mean I sit there and I eat while my daughter is sitting there like pleading. I'm hungry. <laughs> It's just that I make my plate first so that while I'm making hers, I'm not like snacking on crap from the pantry or anything. Yeah. Um, so I make, I make my meals a priority because I know what a difference it makes. And then I think probably two more, uh, or maybe three more, I make time to go to CrossFit and lift heavy weights because that throughout the day makes me feel like the biggest badass ever. I'm like, yes, even if I don't crush goals, I'm still there and I'm still working hard. And I love that feeling of sweat. Like I love it. Um, then time with my husband, even if it is just like five minutes to connect after my daughter's gone to bed. And then I'm a bit of a grandma. I go to bed early so that I can wake up the next morning and do it again. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're the same. We're exactly the same. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Why do you live so far? Why do you live so far? I know. I know. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Second question. In one sentence, what is your vision for your life? What are you creating? What's your purpose? Hmm. Revolution and change. I just want to help women wake up to the things that I have woken up to. I love that. Mm. <laughs> Simple as that. Yes. What advice does your now mom self and would have given to your pre mom self? Mm. It's going to be totally different than what you think. 
you have no control, even though you think you're going to, uh, but also you will learn the best lessons of your life that you never knew you needed to learn, but now you're so thankful for. Mm, love that. Okay, complete the sentence. Women deserve to feel good in their bodies and own their sexuality because? What would life be without that? <laughs> it's a rhetorical question. I keep coming back to suck dry. Like you're just going to be dry and you're going to live like, like a half woman. Like, like a, a half human. Yeah, there's exactly. So much, oh, I love that. A shell of yeah, yourself. Shell yeah. Of yourself. There's so much more out there. Even if you're listening to this and you don't think there is, there is, there's so much out there. Yeah. Love that. Okay. What's your favorite sex pose? <laughs> I told you. I was hoping, okay. Okay. She told me she was going to ask me about sex and I was like, I hope she asked me what position it is because I will go there. <laughs> Right. I am a fan of either on top or doggy style. Oh. It just feels good. It hits that G spot just perfectly. I love that. Oh my gosh. We're like, Kina, we're the same. I can't believe that. Oh my <laughs> okay. Okay. I like to keep it real. I'm totally yeah. blushing and I love it. <laughs> Okay, I like to keep it real and show listeners that even though someone is an expert in one area, they might be struggling with other things. So what are some of your current challenges as a woman, wife, or mother? Hmm, good question. What are some of my current challenges? I currently struggle with um, setting and enforcing boundaries, especially around my work time. Um, in fact, I have a, uh, mindset coach that I was just talking to about that yesterday because I work from my home. And sometimes when I say I'm down in my office and I'm working, don't bother me. My husband will still come up and ask me like a thousand questions that I'm like, what, like when you go to work, I don't have the option to ask you what's going on. So, <laughs> so setting boundaries, but then also doing so in a way that respects my relationship and also mom guilt, because that is a huge prevalent thing, I think, especially for entrepreneurs or just working women in general. Um, what else do I feel like I, what was the question again? What else am I struggling with? Yeah. Mm, learning how to relax more. Mm. I tend to want to go, go, go and like work until like the evenings and like not. So for example, and I posted this on my Instagram, I was going to go before our interview, but instead I sat outside, I got some vitamin D and I relaxed and I need to let myself, give myself permission to do that more. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Okay. Last question. Not every woman is a mother, but every, every woman is a daughter. Mm -hmm. How do you think your relationship with your mom helps to shape who you are today? Mm -hmm. That's a good question too. And I hope she's listening. Hi mom. Uh, <laughs> I think that my relationship with my mom shaped who I am today um, in the same way that my relationship with my daughter has shaped me. And that is going back to um, learning the lessons that I didn't know I needed to learn, but have guided me in the right direction in my life because my mother did the absolute best she could as a single mom of two girls. And she's so, she's such a badass, but it was also the house that I grew up in that had the diet culture and had diet foods all around. And we did join Weight Watchers as a family. Um, and we were concerned about our weight, but I think that that clearly helped shape my direction and my mission in life as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, I should have asked you that because uh, that's, that's one thing that I, I see myself struggling with, but also other moms. It's like when we see our daughters, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like getting their own shape. Uh, and if we ourselves haven't cleared mm -hmm. that in our own experience, then how do you navigate that? It, it, it's, it's definitely, uh, you want to talk a little bit about that a little bit? Yeah, I would actually love to because I think that's a huge piece because that for me as a coach, it's what, it's what motivates me as well to work with women and moms. <coughs> that 
the next generation doesn't have to repeat what's going on. So um, I think there's, there's huge power in, if you don't feel ready to take the action for yourself, do it for your kids. And that's not to say keep doing it for your kids, but certainly use them as motivation to go for it so that your daughter or your son doesn't have to deal with the same issues that you do. So for me, what that looks like for me is when we sit down for meals, I don't make my daughter clean her plate. We let her go until she says her tummy is full. Yeah. And even if that's two bites, it my my husband is a clean plate club kind of guy. So even if that's like two bites and she goes, I'm full and walks away, it gets him a little flustered, but then it's like, it's okay. We can put it back on the plate. We can save the plate for tomorrow, whatever that may be. Um, just empowering her even at three years old to listen to her body. Um, we also do this when she is feeling maybe nervous or angry. I, I ask her, where is she feeling it in her body? And even at three years old, um, like when she was feeling shy at a family reunion, I asked her, where does she feel that in her body? And she said in her tummy. And so that's the idea of like kind of having butterflies. Um, but then also we have fun with it. I take her to the gym with me and she practices all of like the weightlifting. They give her this little PVC bar and she practices weightlifting and she is seeing And then also whenever I see her looking in the mirror, um, I always kind of strike a funny pose behind her. So she starts doing the same thing, you know, and it's just teaching that empowerment right out the gate. And I don't think they're ever too young to learn that. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. I have three girls. I exactly, I know exactly what you mean. Yes. All right, Kenna, I enjoyed this so much. It was so much fun. I love your energy. I love your spirit. I love your mission. I love your purpose. I just love everything about you. I love your sex pose. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so before I let you go, can you share with people, um, where they can find you? Maybe you can share your website, your Instagram, your Facebook, uh, and also talk about your programs, uh, and how it, it looks like to work with you. Yes. So first off, all of the places you can connect with me at, um, Instagram is my absolute favorite. So I am it's Kennefit on Instagram. If you just search Kennefit, the first one that will pop up is a woman with booty pictures, which no shame to her. You do you girl, but that's not me. I'm it's Kennefit on Instagram. So it's um, I-T-S? I-T-S Kennefit. Okay. So K-E-N-N-A-F-I-T. Um, don't be shy. Make sure you send me a DM. I love going, sharing stories and going back and forth as well. Um, on Facebook, I'm Kennefit on Facebook, and then you can find me on my website at Kennefit.com. So it's just Kennefit.com for my website. Um, my programs, I have a free body type quiz that you can take right now to learn more about how your body um, really works with food and getting a little bit more of an insight with that. And then I also work one-on-one -on -one and I do have a nutrition course as well. Awesome. So how does it look like to work with you? Let's say uh, if, it's, if it's somebody who is not local, how does that look like? Yeah, so I only take online clients, so that's perfect. So um, the first thing to do, obviously, stock me on my website. And the next thing to do is if you are interested in any of my programs, you can always start with the free body type quiz, or you can go ahead and book a breakthrough call session with me where we can really get on the phone together and talk about where you're at, what your goals are, what is what you've tried in the past that has failed you, and then what you can do now to start heading in the right direction. Awesome. And all of that information they can access through your website. Perfect. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. So uh, all the links, like I said before, earlier, are going to be uh, in the show notes below. Kenna, thank you so, so much. I love you already. I cannot wait to meet you in person. Maybe one day, maybe oh. I'll, I'll, I'll visit Michigan and you come visit us in Toronto. Um, yes. It's so cool. I really appreciate our, your thank time. Thank you so much for having me. I had a blast. Awesome. Wait, before you go, I know you are ready to jump out into the rest of your day. But before you do that, can I ask you to pause for a moment and do me a quick favor of leaving a review or rating the podcast or share, sharing with a friend or even better, snap a picture of you listening to this episode and share it on Instagram and tag me at Dorit Palvanov 
Coaching. Dorit spelled as D-O-R-I-T, P-A-L-V-A-N-O-V, coaching, all one word. Or use the hashtag confident, energized, and sexy mama podcast. You see, my personal goal beyond having these amazing conversations with guests or hosting my solo episodes is to increase the visibility for this platform and these messages to be shared and heard by the women who need it the most. And there is no way that I can do this on my own. So I'm asking you, the incredible community of confident, energized, and sexy mamas to help me out with this goal. So whether you are coming to me through iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you are listening to the show from, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. It would mean the world to me. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.